Hey guys, Greg Benz here with another luminosity masking tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with the challenges of interior architecture, where you can very commonly have an image like this, where the interior is very, very dark relative to the sunlit exterior and sky that are very, very bright. And so you're dealing with an extremely large contrast range and all that dynamic range requires blending multiple exposures and dealing usually with some pretty tough areas around the window edges. So I want to show you a couple of different ways of dealing with this. Now these images come from architectural photographer Jeffrey Totaro, who was kind enough to donate these images and had asked me, hey Greg, how would you approach this situation? And I actually will have a couple of different answers, but let's first just take a look at the files and see what we're playing with here. So we have this brighter exposure for the interior shadows. We have a middle exposure that um, obviously is bringing back a lot more detail in the, uh, the exterior. And then this darkest exposure, which brings back quite a bit more detail. The sky looks blue again. And so there's a lot of great detail there. Now, one nitpicky little thing here. I think Jeffrey's done a phenomenal job. It's very well composed and shot. He sent me JPEGs and I should have asked him uh, for the raw. He may have this. But if we, if we look at the, um, the, the dot pattern in the shadows here, it does go away in these highlights. So these highlights are kind of blown until we get to the far edge here, we can see the dot pattern. So it's fairly nitpicky, we'll be able to blend this just fine. But if I had access to his original files, or if I was shooting this myself, I would wanna make sure I had a slightly darker exposure so that I could get all that detail back. But it, it's really close and it's gonna be fine here. Um, and then lastly, he also gave me a couple shots that have some people in them. So we'll, we'll blend some folks into the image and just add a little bit more dynamics to this shot. Now, there are a couple different ways you can approach this shoot and it depends which type of architectural photographer you are. If you're shooting homes for residential sale, you might be shooting a ton of homes really quickly and not want to spend a lot of time blending your exposures. And I would point you towards the blend if blending technique in that situation. If you can spend more time or if you're trying to do award winning art or something really high end, you certainly want to spend the extra time to get a really high quality result. So neither approach is necessarily um, more appropriate. It just depends what your, your goals are and how much time you have to spend. So let me first show you the, the blend if technique. Starting with Lumenzia version 3.0, all the masks within Lumenzia can be created as blend if and to do that in photoshop cc you just click this mode button on top this is normal until you get to if under meaning that you'll blend if under for all the different masks and we'll just activate our layer click on it and we can click on any of these uh, different masks so i'm going to blend in the darker spots uh, or from the one image into the lighter spots of the other so i want to blend if the underlying layer is light highlight. So I'm going to move down the light option. So if I blend if with a general light, you can see that we've already brought back some highlight detail in the skylight here, but we're also affecting other parts of the image. I can try lights two. It's starting to be a little more targeted. Lights three is definitely much more targeted to the, the skylight versus what the, the lights one was there. So I go with lights one, a little flat. So I'll probably stick with the, the lights three there. I think it looks pretty good. And we'll try the same thing with the next dark exposure. Lights three, let's try lights two, lights. So somewhere around the lights three there, I think is probably about right. And if we just alt click the original layer, we went from here to here. So we can see we've dramatically improved the amount of visible detail outside the windows. Very convincingly, there's no halos or other issues, but notice things like the floor and the far left wall here have been adversely affected. We really don't need to be blending those parts of the scene because the, the blend if is affecting everything. We want to just affect certain areas. And there's a very, very quick and easy way to address that. Just simply select your blend if layers, and then we're gonna put them in a group with a mask. If I alt click on group, then I get a black mask. So everything inside the group is now hidden. I hit B for my paintbrush, and I'm just simply gonna use a paintbrush to paint in the areas of the blend if that I want. So I'm not going to let the blend if affect those other areas like this shadow. I don't want it there, uh, but just the areas that I want to have blended. 
So that gives you the, the speed of the blend if, which is quick to control things. And you know, as an added benefit, because we're just working with a very simple mask and a couple blend ifs, the, the file size stays relatively pretty small with this approach. So let's save this result uh, for reference here. I'm just gonna save a, a snapshot and we'll just simply call that blend if. Um, but what I, what I don't love about this blend if, if we go back to where we started and just look at the darkest exposure, see the detail in the skylight that we have here versus the blend if is more flat. So the, the blend if has, has done a pretty good job, but we can do better. So if you have the time, this is the approach that I would take. So take your, take your next layer. Let's put a, a black mask on it. So you can just alt click on the uh, new layer mask icon. So we've hidden that layer, but it's ready for us to start painting on it. And we wanna paint through a luminosity selection to target just those window areas. And then we can build up with a greater maximum selection. What happened with the blend if was these blue areas were not fully blended. We're gonna create a mask that fully blends those areas and that's gonna keep the contrast and bring back more of that, that exterior detail in this version of the image. So let's change our mode back to normal. So we can just create a preview and we know that light three works really well with a blend if, so it's probably the right option here. And we can see with light three, we have a, a good selection of windows, minimal uh, to no selection of the surrounding areas. Just to double check, lights four could be a very appropriate option. It uh, is darker along the ridge of that, that blue element. If we look you know, in the underlying image, we've got this blue uh, piece there. With a mask like this, I'm not gonna get uh, all that blue in the first pass. But if I do a few different passes with the paintbrush, eventually what's gonna be a medium selection will build up to fully whiten the mask. So I can definitely work with this lights for very targeted selection. And if I had to choose, I'd rather go with a more restrictive selection and build up to the final result than a more general uh, selection that's gonna let me accidentally paint in the wrong areas because I'm gonna use this luminosity selection like a stencil to control where the paint goes with my brush. But I think light three is gonna work just fine. So let's use that because it'll be a little bit faster. So I'm just going to command click on the selection button, which loads it as a selection with the marching ants hidden because I held down command or the control key. And you can see that the selection button is green, just giving a visual indication that yes, there is an active selection on this image, even though you can't see it because we hid the marching ants. Now, you may want to protect the pixels in the image, so I'll click on that lock so we can only paint on the mask now. And with our selection active, clicking B for brush, we're just going to paint right over this. And if you look at my brush settings, I'm using full opacity with a low flow. That's something that I do most of the time. Flow lets you, you know, controls the speed at which the effect comes out but opacity changes the maximum amount. So if I keep a high opacity, then I can keep my, my Wacom tablet down. I can keep painting with the, the brush and build up more and more and more. So it gives me a lot of control with this approach. Whereas if I just use low opacity, I'd have to keep using multiple brush strokes to build up to the, the maximum amount. I'm also using a very soft brush. So my hardness is set to zero. And the reason I like that is that just naturally feathers the result. I'm, I'm working pretty quick here, and I want to just have a nice clean transition. The luminosity masks are doing most of the work, but a soft edge brush is going to help in that effort to make sure that there's no obvious transition from one area to the next. So we've got this, this medium uh, you know, uh, exposure worked in here. We've brought back a lot more detail, and that's critical because we can't go directly from the bright exposure to the darkest exposure. There'd be telltale uh, lines and other issues where the transition would look natural. So you want to blend multiple different exposures to give a gradual build from the inside to the outside. So for this next layer, do the same thing. Let's protect the pixels. We'll add a black layer mask. Uh, I had that selection active, so it actually turned into a layer mask. Let's delete that and we'll do that again. So I should have hit deselect first. So now we're, we're ready to go. We just need to load another selection. Now I'm not using the exact same light three when I click this because we've already blended 
uh, that lighter uh, expo or that darker exposure underneath. If I turn that off for a second, notice that my selection does change. So uh, it is a different lights three because we've we've altered the underlying image, and you want that. If you kept using the same um, selection each time, you'd be painting the exact same areas. But as you bring in the, the darkness from the edges in, the, the edge of that mask or selection is going to move a little bit. So you do want a, a, a new selection here. So same thing. Well, the uh, lights three looks pretty good. Let's just take a look. Lights two is too general. I can see the rafters. I don't want that. Lights four is very restrictive. Notice the uh, that blue beam is super dark. I could use this, but I'd spend a lot of time trying to restore that. So I think light three is pretty clearly the best option here. So again, command click on selection to load it with the marching ants hidden. Make sure my mask is selected. Click on B for the paintbrush. And we're doing the exact same thing here. So we're just using that, that selection, which is currently invisible as kind of a stencil to guide what we're doing. And in fact, uh, one thing I like to do a lot of times with an image like this is click on the split option in Lamentia. This is showing me side by side the mask on the left and the blended image on the right. And the reason is that when I see the mask, I can see these areas where this, this beam is not fully selected because I haven't painted on it enough times to bring it back in. And as I paint, notice the result is getting improved with each pass of the brush. So by looking at both of these at the exact same time, I just have a, a more informed view of what I'm doing. The mask is making it very obvious what has changed or not, but the blended view is you know, making sure I'm staying grounded in reality and looking at the actual image that I'm creating. So they're, they're both useful views and I like to have them up at the same time. So I could keep working on this to really perfect this if I want to, but I think we're already pretty much there. Notice that at this point, that, that blue beam is pretty well hidden there, and there's just a lot more, more detail in the image as a result. So we'll go ahead and close this view, and now we just see the image here. I'm going to deselect with Command D, and let's take a look from the before to the after. We've created, I think, a, a much nicer blend here with a lot more detail in those areas. And let's go ahead and save this. And we'll just call this uh, uh, traditional mask, if I can spell right. And if we just kind of look at the, uh, the blend if, which is pretty faded versus the traditional mask, things look much better. And again, I could spend more time to really tweak this, but you can, you can see the, the general idea between these two techniques and how, you know, even when we zoom in here and look around the image, there's, there's no telltale blend lines. Things look really clean and, and realistic here. So it's a, it's a great result. Like I said, you know, if I had a you know, high dollar client, I'd probably spend some more time. You know, things like this little detail in the background, I don't wanna see what, what is that? It looks like, oh, that's just in the image. There's some kind of reflection. I'd probably clone that out. Little details like that, but the blend looks great. Now, the, the last thing here, we had those people we want to bring back in, so let's do that. So when I click on this, you notice immediately that it's a brighter exposure. I would go back to the raw and try and match the exposure so that they were the same. That would, that would certainly help things, but we don't really need that here. Notice that everything this person is in front of is very, very light, and he's darkening everything. That's a perfect scenario for switching over to the difference, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the darken blend mode. So now it's just going to darken those areas and we've blended him in very nicely. Now things like the exit sign turned off, right? So we don't want to, we don't want to use this everywhere. We're going to use a mask here as well. So I'll click for a black mask, use our white brush and just paint back where we want that guy to be in the image. But that gives us a very nice convincing result. Now we need to add in this other guy and I'm going to leave these two out and just get this guy here. So let's try the same thing. Let's go with the dark and blend mode. We'll put a black mask on and then we'll paint this guy in. In fact, I'm gonna use a little bit tighter mask. There's, you know, don't, don't be unnecessarily sloppy. Even if you're working quickly, you know, there's really no need to just throw paint everywhere because you, you can only create problems if you're just being sloppy. So, you know, it's good to find a way to work quickly. But uh, notice now that this guy has a kind of a yellow stripe through the middle of him. 
and uh, his collar is now a computer. So the background was darker and he couldn't show through. So the dark and blend mode doesn't work for him because he's in front of an already dark background. So that's not an option. Let's go back to the normal blend mode and notice he's got this super bright halo around him. Well, we have a couple of options. We could use luminosity masks to paint him in and that would certainly work. But a potentially quicker option is why not just darken the areas around him? And we can do that by adding a curve. And then if we Alt or Option click and hover right on the divider between these, we can create a clipping mask. So anything we do on this curve will only affect this layer beneath. And what we want to do is darken down those background tones that are causing the halo without darkening him. So let's click on this. Make sure we can see the, uh, the numeric values. And if I go to the targeted adjustment tool, let's let me interactively make changes. I can click here to set a point in the halo. And then if I look out here, notice I'm at about the, the 101 point like that. So I was looking at these values here. So as I hover here, if I wanna to get to there, I need to move the, the dot I have down to about, you know, maybe it's like 110 or so. So it sort of depends where I'm hovering. But I'm just gonna take this point and just with the arrow keys, nudge this thing down to about 110. I still see a little halo, let's go a little further. Push it a little bit further. And that halo's pretty gone, but of course I've, I've made him a little too dark. So I have a, a couple of options. I could at this point take a point on the curve and bring the shadows back up to try and restore him. That's one option, I can undo that. Alternatively, if I go back to our blend if modes, I know that uh, he's dark. So I wanna apply the curve to everything that's not dark. So turn on the not blending mode and just try the different not dark mode. So not darks three, not darks four. That looks pretty good. So at this point we've basically knocked that halo out. So you know we didn't do a lot of fancy blending here. We just painted him in and then we darkened down that exposure a little bit but protected the shadows to, to keep him looking pretty natural there. So let's take a look. We've gone from this original exposure to this right here, which, which looks great using a couple of different approaches. You can use the, the blend if mode if you wanna work quickly. But again, blend if for exposure blending is usually a bit of a compromise. I love blend if for things like color grading or controlling where sharpening goes or protecting my shadows from getting darkened too much by vignette. It's an awesome tool for those uses. For exposure blending, it's usually a little bit of a compromise and traditional blending with luminosity mask or, or even better, luminosity selections will usually give you a little bit better results. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you click the subscribe button down below to be notified when I release new videos.